Shall I start, Rangada? Yes, start. In this progression, the first step is a certain detached superiority to the three modes of nature. The soul is inwardly separated and free from the lower prakriti, not involved in its coils, indifferent and glad about it. Nature continues to act in the triple round of her ancient habits, desire, grief, and joy, attack the heart, the instruments fall into inaction and obscurity and weariness. Light and peace come back into the heart and mind and body. But the soul stands unchanged and untouched by these changes. Observing and unmoved by the grief and desire of the lower members, smiling at their joys and their strainings, regarding and unoverpowered by the failing and the darknesses of the thought and the wildness or the weaknesses of the heart and nerves, uncompelled and unattached to the mind's illuminations and its relief and sense of ease or of power in the return of light and gladness. It throws itself into none of these things, but waits unmoved by the intimations of a higher will and the intuitions of a greater luminous knowledge. Thus doing always, it becomes eventually free even in, in its nature parts from the strife of the three modes and their insufficient values and imprisoning limits. For now, this lower prakriti feels progressively a compulsion from a higher shakti. The old habits to which it clung receive no further sanction and begin steadily to lose their frequency and force of recurrence. At last, it understands that it is called to a higher action and a better state and however slowly, however reluctantly, with whatever initial or prolonged ill will and stumbling ignorance, it submits, turns and prepares itself for the change. Okay, so very interesting, Tara. And I have made a note on the, in my comments, the column. So in the previous para, he has described the witness attitude, the sakshi. And here also he is talking about that, but towards the end of the para, he is telling that it becomes more than the sakshi. Even the body-mind life starts responding to the call of the divine supreme will. Okay, that's what he's saying. So, in other words, remember the Gita's um, the gradations. First is the sakshi. Then you realize that not only are you only the witness, but you are also the anumanta. It is you who have given the permission to the body mind life to undergo its experiences. So you become the Anumanta. In other words, you have the power to say no to some of the things that you don't want in the body mind life. So then, slowly, slowly, as you keep going higher and higher, Anumanta, then Jyata, then Hartha, then you realize that you can, even from that second level, have some influence on the body mind life. That's exactly what he's describing. Yes. Okay. So remember this gradation, it's very important. We have always been saying that from this um, from this second level of the spiritual planes, normally there is no power to change anything in the lower. But that is true only when you are a witness self. But if you start uh, rising even from the witness self up, Anumanta, Jyata, Bharta, then you start realizing that I have the power to change something, not change entirely your body and your vital and all, but some of the things you will be able to change. Okay? Some of the habits that you have can disappear, some of the good things can come in, your mind will enlarge. So all this description is there towards the end. Okay, So we'll see what he's saying and go carefully and interpret the words. Okay, <laughs> The initial advantage Is that what we are doing today? One second. In this progression. Uh, initial advantage, huh? No, in this progression. Oh, 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 so I got the wrong. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So, in this progression, okay, the progression that we just now spoke about, <coughs> witness self, that is the Sakshi, 
then you go to the anumanta the permission giver and then the bharta the supporter of the body mind life etc that is progression okay in the progression the first step is a certain detached superiority to the three modes of nature what are the three modes of nature tamas rajas and sattva in other words if you are detached from tamas rajas it, it means that you are soul or the soul consciousness is not now identified with your body mind life it has gone inwards it has gone inwards and it got detached okay so it is a certain detached superiority to the three modes of nature the soul is inwardly separated and free from the lower prakriti identification with body mind life has disappeared completely you know now that you are the soul the soul is inwardly separated and free from the lower prakriti the lower prakriti very clear body mind life okay because he prangata yes one Tell question me. who knows who knows that you are not the soul the consciousness the consciousness which was at a lower level at a mental level now realizes that it is not the mental consciousness but is a purusha and the purusha can be at all the levels so the consciousness which was at a lower level has now gone to the higher level and it is identifying with the soul okay. okay yeah this question is a good one because the consciousness also goes on changing okay is a consciousness which is that of the soul and it is going from mental consciousness to soul consciousness and from soul consciousness to higher consciousness is like the as i said higher mind elevated mind intuitive mind every time it is a purusha only that is going up okay so it is a purusha the individual consciousness okay but how do we know where the consciousness is it should be something concrete know that we can see ke okay my consciousness is here or there now how you don't one feel it how does one feel it you won't feel it now if you are identified with the body mind life you will not feel but if you are identified with the right one you will know immediately that this is where i am okay and mother said very clearly someone asked her how do i know that the psychic is awake or not so mother said if it is awake you will never ask that question it reveals itself <clears throat> it reveals itself it is not something to be acquired it reveals itself and this is true at all the levels that's why the divine can never be known by the mind it can only be known by itself in other words what i mean is that your consciousness goes and joins at that level then that level becomes obvious to you then you know see the difference between the lower and the higher so in that question will not even come up if you have the experience okay so <laughs> this question of the consciousness it is not something static it is something that grows it is the same consciousness that is growing and becoming bigger and bigger and higher and higher and as it keeps going higher and higher its knowledge increases its power increases so it's the same thing going up and down remember the image of the ice water water vapor essentially it's the same Okay. So this purusha, which Pallavi asked, the question implies that there are two. Okay, one purusha which is below and one purusha which is above, or the soul consciousness and the consciousness are different. So these things are some. Some of these things cannot be expressed in words, but it is a consciousness which you call purusha. At the lowest level, this purusha is material. At a slightly higher level, the vital purusha. pranamaya purusha then manomaya purusha then anandamaya purusha and vijnanamaya purusha that's the usual classification made but is a purusha which is consciousness is rising up and as it rises up to each level it recognizes and that is a level so when the consciousness goes up you will know that you are at that level okay <laughs> it identifies which is with that level So the soul is inwardly separated and free from the lower prakriti. Lower prakriti, body mind life. 
not involved in its coils, not the word coils, very interesting, it is so subtle, okay? the vital leaves entering the mind and binding it down with its uh, desires and attachments and comes down into the body also, okay? coils, <laughs> like a serpent or like an octopus sending out its uh, and uh, tying you down. Indifferent and glad above it. This description not identified with lower pregnancy and indifferent and glad above it is a witness self, what you normally call the self at the lowest level. Lowest level of the self, the second level not involved in its coils, indifferent and glad about it. Nature continues to act in the triple round of her ancient habits. Note that very carefully. Your consciousness has gone up, but the body-mind life continues with its old habits. Okay? So the first stage of liberation is you are liberated first. And then you have the, if you want to change the body-mind life, you have to go even higher up to get the power. Okay? So that is the, the first is liberation. The other day, Pallavi was asking, you don't reject the physical world in Sri Aurobindo Yoga, but you have to reject, not the body mind, you have to reject the attachments, the desires. You don't reject the body mind life like the ascetic is doing. And he rejects the phys physical world also. He goes away to the mountain, the forest, and the Himalayas. But here, you are rejecting only those things which are the, you don't want in yourself. Attachment, ego, desires, and all the vices that are there in the body. Okay? Selfishness, okay, fear, aggression, all these things you have to reject. Uh, Rangada? Yes. Uh, yes. In simple words, can we say that uh, rejection is not there, but non-attachment is necessary? That's right. We don't have to reject, but non-attachment is necessary. That's right. That's right. Exactly. Non-attachment is absolutely necessary. <laughs> That's right. So, nature continues to act with the triple round of her ancient habits. Desire, grief, and joy attack the heart. The instruments fall into inaction. The instruments are the body mind life. They fall into inaction and obscurity and weariness, light and peace come back into the heart and mind and body. So it's an up and down movement. So you, there is weariness. I told you, I had a friend, very close friend who had this experience. Mother told him that I'm very happy you are in the Brahmic consciousness. But he told mother, but mother, I'm, I'm not doing any work. That's exactly what Sri is saying here. Weariness comes in, okay? and. Uh, instruments fall into inaction. It was very difficult to drag him to work. <laughs> he was not very willing to do what he was doing, but he was very little disinterestedness that comes in. You feel that these things are not important. Okay? That's what we are saying here. Weariness, light and peace come back into the heart and mind and body. But the soul stands unchanged and untouched by these changes. Okay? It, all these things are happening in the body mind life level in the valley, but your soul is seated on the mountain top and watching all these things, not affected at all. Success, failure, grief, they are there in the body mind life, but nothing. This is very interesting. If you think about it, you will understand that it can happen even to an avatar in the beginning. Okay? When Sri Ramdo was told that Mrinalini has passed away, there were tears in his eyes. So that's the description that we are hearing now in the synthesis. That the body-mind life gets attacked. But inside you are absolutely calm. And so somebody who doesn't understand this, is seeing Sri and saying, my God, he's feeling sad. He is not feeling sad. <laughs> the body-mind life which is affecting. And in mechanical action it becomes. It's a purely mechanical and unconscious action. Okay, so, but the soul stands unchanged and untouched by these changes, observing and unmoved by the grief and desire of the lower members, smiling at their joys and their strainings, regarding and unoverpowered by the failing and the darkness of the thought and the wildness 
or the weakness of the heart and nerves, uncompelled and unattached to the mind's eliminations. Now, even good things are happening, you don't bother about it. Okay? Mind's eliminations, you are not attached at all to it. And it's relief and sense of ease or of power in the return of light and gladness, it throws itself into none of these things, but waits unmoved for the intimations of a higher will and the intuitions of a greater luminous knowledge. Now, there you are. This sentence very clearly now telling you that from the purely witness attitude, you can go slightly higher to the, the Anumanta attitude. Okay? So, very clearly you can see. It throws itself into none of these things, but waits unmoved for the intimations of a higher will. So, you are going slightly higher now. Okay? And the will is telling you what you have to do and what you are not to do. And the intuitions, even higher up, of a greater luminous knowledge. So, if you are patient and don't think that this is the last time, then you can rise even higher and get more and more. You see, Gita's description, if you remember. I keep repeating because it's so important to understand this. From the Sakshi attitude, you become the Anumanta. From the witness, you become the permission giver. And then from the permission giver, you realize that you are the actually, your consciousness is supporting the body mind life. Remember, we said that the self is the one that supports the, the self is the one that creates the cosmos and also supports it. Okay. So that's exactly at an individual level, that becomes the truth. What is universal level is also true at the individual level. Remember that. <clears throat> okay. So, higher will, definitely, you are in the Anumanta stage or even higher, and intu intuitions of a greater luminous knowledge. The word intuitions is interesting and it's very indicated because in the second level, you have the higher mind first, which is normally the witness attitude. Then you go to the Anumanta level, which could be the human mind. And then you have the intuitive mind, and then you have the over mind. So all these belong only to the lower, to the spiritual level of consciousness. Okay. Thus doing always, it becomes eventually free, even in its nature parts, from the strife of the three modes and their insufficient values and imprisoning limits. Now, this is what happens. When you, when the consciousness above, seated above, says, no, I don't want this habit, slowly, slowly, the habit disappears. But it takes time, slowly. Depends on how intense your aspiration is and your power to change the lower. This is what happens. As I told you, we gave a very interesting example to show how it happens. The, Desire, when you are giving, you are giving energy to the desire. But when you are at the higher level and you say no to it, you have stopped giving energy to it. So only the energy which it has got already accumulated, like a, a battery which is charged or your computer which is charged, if you don't recharge it, then the slowly the charge will disappear. Okay? Exactly in the same way, we normally give the example of the scooter. I want to save petrol and 100 meters before my uh, the destination, I switch off the engine. So, I'm not giving any more power to the habit. The scooter goes on slowly, 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 and until finally it comes to a stop in front of your destination. So, that's exactly what happens with your habit switch. So, even at the spiritual level, even if you're, even at the lower level also, it's very difficult to change habits. But if you say no to it, then slowly the, it can disappear. But it will never disappear fully unless you go to the second level. At level one, it's almost impossible to change your habits because you are identified with the body mind life. Okay. So even if you want to say no, that no is only a half no. <laughs> okay. So desire is very difficult to get it up, not easy. <laughs> you know that it's not right. And yet, you say no to it, but it will reduce maybe, but not disappear. The disappearance of desire and all these things can come only when you go to the higher level. <clears throat> there is a very interesting correspondence with Shanadi. And Shanadi, Monday told Shri 
I am suddenly feeling like eating fish. Okay, <laughs> I have a desire to eat fish. So she never told her, and she, she was certainly not uh, at the second level of spiritual at that time because her correspondence shows that clearly. So she never told her, certainly not. You cannot have desire for fish. You can eat your desire, but not the fish. <laughs> so she said, even if you do that. Slowly, slowly, it can reduce. The desires can reduce. Also, you have to use your willpower a little bit. But complete disappearance, not possible. And Shemba said, don't bother too much about it. When you go to the higher level, it starts disappearing by itself. So in all these things, it's not very clearly mentioned, but the implication is there that if you succeed 80%, the rest gets done by itself. <coughs> 80% successful. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. What, what is the difference between the body consciousness ah. and the physical consciousness? No. It's the same thing. No. Oh. I just read last night in the bulletin, Sri Aurobindo ah. saying that ah. the body consciousness is not the same as physical consciousness. Okay. I'll explain to you. It is the consciousness which is at a higher level, but which is affected by the body's tamas. Your consciousness is normally, if a mind is mental, okay, he is mostly in the mental consciousness, but sometimes the body is tired and that puts you down and you are in the physical consciousness. That means you are actually at a normal level. You are not fully at the mental level or even the vital level. The Physical consciousness is normally the tamas influencing you. That's what it means. <clears throat> the body consciousness is different. The body consciousness is, as I said, okay. Body consciousness is very interesting. We can give so many examples, okay. One is the healing that the body does to itself, okay. Suppose you get a cut. The body knows that this is harmful and it heals itself with uh, coagulation of the blood. Now, this is the body is repairing itself. It's not a mental movement at all. It's a purely body, uh, body consciousness. The consciousness in the body is aware that it should not do this. The kidneys, which are filtering out the harmful elements in your blood, that is body consciousness. <laughs> then, very interesting things are there. One day, I remember. My teacher, Juvanga, asked me that the stomach is digesting meat. Huh? That it digests the meat. So, why does it not digest the stomach itself? Why does the stomach eat itself? Because it is um, because it is meat, meat, flesh, flesh. So, he gave the answer himself. Doctors will confirm to me whether this is right or wrong. But there is a coating which appears before you eat or just about when you are eating. The coating protects the, the, the surface of the, the inner surface of the uh, stomach. But sometimes this does not work out and then you get ulcers. Okay. So, that also is body consciousness. So, <clears throat> so then there are so many other examples of body consciousness. The eye is blinking, giving rest, okay? Or the other thing is, which is very interesting, the um, a fly that sits on the flank of a, a horse or a, a cow. You have seen what will happen. The horse, it shakes. The, the skin will shake it off like that, okay? So these are all body consciousness. So, so Ranga, the body yeah. consciousness is pertaining to individual bodies and physical consciousness is overall consciousness uh, in the physical in the physical uh, nature you could say that in a certain way because the consciousness at a higher level can be affected by the uh, physical consciousness physical consciousness normally the uses for the tamasic attitude in the mind and the body you are physical consciousness means your, your consciousness is not at a higher level. It's at the body, the lowest, lowest level of the body-mind. Could, could we say 
that the body consciousness is mainly subconscious because things yes. are happening to us in a subconscious manner. Yes. We are not in control of what the kidney or the heart does. Exactly. Exactly. And physical, physical consciousness is the consciousness which is present in matter, whether yes. it's a stone, plant, or a human being. Yes. That's right. Even you are coughing. Okay. You are not deciding to mentally to cough. The body is coughing and throwing out something which is it doesn't want it inside. Sneezing. Okay. These are all body consciousnesses. Okay. Then the very interesting body consciousness which I, I have noticed in myself. I don't know if you people have experimented. But when you are eating, look at the movements of the tongue. Okay. How it moves and takes it. Food which is stuck in some corner, it will go and bring it out. It's not a mental movement at all. <laughs> okay. Notice that next time when you are eating, you will see very interesting how the tongue goes into all corners and takes out the food from there and brings it again in front of the teeth to chew it. So these are all very interesting uh, examples of body consciousness. It's not mental. It's not. It's subconscious, as Yasmin says. It is there at the body level. <laughs> Okay. So, and physical consciousness would yeah. be in matter. So that means it is present in the whole of the universe, in the sun and the moon and everywhere. Yeah, but normally when you use the word physical consciousness, you refer to the individual. Okay. What you are saying, the energy that is there everywhere, that is usually what you call the universal force. It's not in the individual. <laughs> But in the, in the universe also, you have all the three elements, huh? Sattva, Rajas, Tamas. All the three are there. In fact, this, this, this discussion is very interestingly taken up in the, in the Gita. Even food can be Sattvic, Rajasic, Tamasic. Even animals can be Sattvic, Rajasic, Tamasic. Even your gift giving, Dana, even your will, all these things are subject to Sattva, Rajas, Tamas. Tarika knows about that. She should be able to say. Even your will. There is a detailed discussion about this in the Gita. Your will can be sattvic. It can be tamasic. It can be rajasic. Then even your food can be like that. Okay. <laughs> Very interesting. But what, what about the universe? The yeah. stars and meteors and all. How do they become sattva, rajas, tamas? <laughs> You have to think of them as the characteristics of matter, the characteristics of energy, and the characteristics of intelligence. Okay. Intelligence is there everywhere. Huh? They are there at the, at the proper level. When it enters into the lower levels, it enters even into a caterpillar, it enters into a cat, it enters into a human being. But when it does not enter into anywhere, it is the universe. When it enters into the individual, it can take on the individual tamas, rajas, and stuff. Okay? So, we get back to our text. So, remember, this consciousness is one only. But as it keeps rising, that's why you have the the word Purusha. Purusha can be at the physical level, it can be there at the vital level, it can be there at the mental level, it can be there at the spiritual level, it can be there at the overmind level, even supermental level. It's the same consciousness which is rising and going up and changing its character. Okay. Yeah, that's why you have the Annamaya Purusha, Pranamaya Purusha, Manomaya Purusha, then you have the <coughs> Spiritual levels of consciousness, which normally they don't uh, specify very clearly, but in the Gita you have the Kshara Purusha, which is identification of body and life. You have the Akshara Purusha, which is the second level, the spiritual consciousness, and you have the Uttama Purusha, the highest level, but similar refers to usually as the Ishwara consciousness, the super mind. Okay. So Pallavi's question, who is experiencing it? So this should be clear now. Right? Uh, Dangada? Yeah. Uh, about this yeah. body consciousness, uh, uh -huh. Sherwin has talked a lot even in that uh, essays 
in one of supramental manifestations second uh-huh. essay the perfection of body in yes. which he says that all this which we think is reflex uh, the examples which you gave that there is a consciousness behind it and we can become aware of this consciousness yes through yoga we can become aware we can control it we can know about it yes. and uh, not only that the, even uh, he includes that we can know when a disease is coming we yes. can know when a body is not ready for something we can know a yes. body is tired and it should not take the certain step to the extent that we can uh, which mother talks of the examples we can feel that somebody is behind us or we are going to have an accident and we can avoid it so yes. the body consciousness i think he is talking of the consciousness which is present in the cells and yes. we can become aware of it through our uh, yoga and use it for our uh, you know our daily life or whatever or whatever yes. that's right and mother was working at that level she was working at yes. the yes. cellular yes. level ha uh-huh. that is that is yeah quite right quite right yeah okay so we go back to our text so now we are so observing an unmoved by the grief and desire of the lower members smiling at the joys and their strainings regarding an unoverpowered by the feeling and the darkness of the thought and the wildness wildness refers definitely to the vital or the weaknesses of the heart and nerves okay heart and nerve uncompelled and unattached to the mind illuminations and its relief and sense of ease or of power in the return of light and brightness it throws itself into none of these things it sits above and waits but waits unmoved for the intimations of a higher will and the intuitions of a greater divine knowledge thus this uh, uh, smiling what he is saying here smiling at the joys and the shenings in synthesis in another place later on he will tell you that it is like a child having tantrums okay because the toy has been taken away from her and the child is suffering like anything it is suffering i want my toy back it is crying it's heart out but the parent knows there is nothing serious okay it is exactly this what happens when you go to the self you look at the body mind life sufferings and complaints and wailings and it is not affected at all it just sits calm and quiet and smiles indulgently nothing serious okay so this is the experience of the this is what happens and now that uh, she is not there i can openly discuss it okay it is my sister is be in the nursing home and she did not like to be in the nursing home at all okay and she used to say i want to go home i want to go home and all but one day when i went to her she is telling me very frankly that it makes no difference absolutely to me i am seeing that all these things are so 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 unimportant it is absolutely no value at all and i am absolutely calm and quiet then i immediately recognized that this is the uh, self and i said how long did this last for you she said about 2 to 1 half hours and after that you slowly come back to your normal consciousness it back to the physical consciousness <laughs> so it's interesting that you can have it for a short period the one i was talking about my friend he had it for 6 months and uh, the first time it happens it cannot be ever full you lose it you come back into your normal to consolidate to do the mopping up operations even for sriram do when he went to the higher level of consciousness okay it is done the job was done but later on parts of your body mind life are at the lower consciousness they pull you down and sriram do says he had a lot of difficulty in raising this lower level to the higher level okay or rather the higher level has to descend into the lower level it took him quite a lot of effort so the first time it is never complete but the experience goes on repeating itself repeating itself until finally it becomes an ex- a realization and not an experience okay so this is exactly what he thinks said here and the description is very very clear <laughs> so this is the it can happen to so many people okay i tell you yeah, so many of my the students who come and study life divine and uh, synthesis with me they tell me extraordinary things sometimes okay without understanding the implication <laughs> so 
One girl was telling me how she was absolutely calm and quiet the whole day. And another interesting thing, the moment she was in that consciousness, she knew that it is special. That's why I'm telling Yasmin, because Yasmin asked, how do I know? So when you are in that consciousness, you know that it is special. You may not be able to identify the level because you don't have the theoretical knowledge, but you know that you are in a special consciousness. Okay? There's no question. You can't fool yourself. The moment you ask questions, you know that you are not at that level. And the moment you are in that level, you will not ask the question. Mother was very clear about that. Okay? So, this smiling, he himself gives himself the attitude of the parent towards the child having tantrums. <laughs> so that's exactly it. Then, thus doing always, it becomes eventually free even in its nature parts. Which are the nature parts? Body-mind life. So, even the body-mind life starts changing, even when you are at the spiritual level of consciousness, not the supramental. But even at that level, changes start taking place. Okay? So, in the body also, and also in the... Now, for instance, Ramdo's body, okay, changed color, and he says in the, um, in the record of yoga, he says the, uh, the hair need, did not need oiling at all. It was absolutely, almost always oiled. Then the uh, toenails started changing the shape. Even this face, if you look carefully, you will see how it has changed. Look at the uh, picture of 1950 and compare it with 1910 in jail. You will see the difference. Okay, So, body also starts changing and the vital also starts changing. But don't confuse. This is not the supermental transformation that Swamba wants. The supermental transformation is for the body itself to become immortal. Okay? It conquers death. Your existence in the world is Swayambhu. It is you yourself can create yourself and you can dissolve your own body mind life. Okay? That is the transformation that Shrimda wants at the spiritual level. And that is possible only for the supermental race, not spiritual beings. Spiritual beings are great, but it's not the spiritual transformation that he wants. Okay? So now I go to the next sentence. For now, this lower prakriti feels progressively a compulsion. From a higher shakti. It's very Ganga, just, Yeah, tell me. Gangada. Yeah. Just one question. So yes. then we had the concept of Icha Mrityu. So ah. what is that then? Icha Mrityu is uh, uh, not so fantastic a, uh, a thing. Mrityu is there, no? Mrityu yeah. Is there. But for the uh, for the uh, it is maybe halfway point you can say. Okay, so a very developed yogi can mm. say that I don't want my, um, I don't want to, I want to leave the body. He can do that willingly. Okay. In fact, this is discussed with Sri Ramana also in the evening talks. So they say, uh, Sri Ramana says, Icham Ritchie is possible. Okay, then. No, but then, but then uh, what we are talking about, supramental, uh, this thing, so uh, there will be death, the body will remain as it is. No, no, no. The body can be revolved, but it's okay. It's an interesting question, but there can be gradations there also, huh? Mm. There can be gradations also there. Maybe the uh, Icha will not be there any time, but this supermetal body, at any time it is possible. The power will be complete. <laughs> mm -hmm. In the case of the Icha Mrityu in a yogi, even mm. know that it is now time for him to go, and he can do it on his own. That's true. Uh, so it's not clear for me the difference. The difference is not clear for me. Yeah, no, it is not clear to me either. <laughs> um, what, what is Icha Mrityu? Yeah. What is Icha Mrityu, Rangada? Icha Mrityu is when a yogi decides that he wants to leave the body consciously. That is Icha Mrityu. Icha means... Uh. Yeah, my own wish, my Is own that? desire. Okay. So my, ah, okay. my willing, my will, if you want. I will that I will leave the body. Mm -hmm. That is what happened with uh, Vivekananda. 
In fact, he said something very interesting. He went, when he was about to leave his body, left his body, he went to his closest friend in a subtle body and told him, I have spat out the body. Okay? He didn't, he didn't say, I have come out of my body. He said, I have spat out the body. Now, just imagine, what does that imply? It implies that you are in a consciousness where your body is a small part of your consciousness and you have thrown it out of your consciousness. Okay? So at that level, the body has absolutely no importance at all. Now our consciousness is in the body. But for a yogi, the consciousness is much larger than the body mind life. Okay. I believe human body had Icham with you. I have no information on that. I don't know, somewhere I had read it or something like that. And I have a feeling that uh, the physical body, when it starts having problems, you know, multiple uh, heart problem, kidney problem, whatever. Yes. And if that, and if you don't have the power to bring harmony, peace, and light there, then the person who even has Icham with you will get fed up and just give up the body. Yes. Uh, I don't know. I'm just surmising. Yes, yes and no. Because the Icham with you, the real Icham with you is not because there's a problem, but just because you know that it is now the time for you to leave without any problem. No? There's a big difference between the two. You know that your work in the physical world is over and you don't need to linger anymore in the physical world. That is Icham with you. No, Rangata, it may be that you know that in this body you can't do any more. Yeah, or you need because no... that person will again be reborn. No, it's not yes. that he will... That's right. So, can't do any more, I will... In <laughs> this body. In this body. <laughs> so, in this body. I mean, because it's... That's right. <laughs> so, and also, you must remember one thing, that these are not absolute rules. There's a lot of flexibility in all these things. And therefore, the idea of gradation is so important. I keep repeating this. In everything, there's a gradation. There can be a low point. There can be a middle point. There can be a high point. There can be a highest point also. <laughs> okay. After all, a yogi also is undergoing the process of transformation. But it's not the transformation that she ever wants. Okay. Anyway, so it's 8.40 past already. So I have to stop here today. I have another class now. Okay. It is a very interesting discussion. And I welcome Thank all you. questioning. And Archana's comments are also interesting. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.